Welcome big dogs. Today I'm going to show you how to determine material allowables from a structural analyst perspective. So as a structural analyst, a lot of times after you perform your FEA analysis, your hand calculations, the ultimate goal is to present a margin of safety based on off of a material allowable. So to get these material allowables, essentially you go to experimental data and you determine it from a distribution of data. So I'm going to discuss how to do that today using a Python example. But specifically, I'm going to point you to Mill Handbook 17. That's the reference I'm going to be referring to throughout this presentation. Essentially, it outlines how to determine material allowables for composite materials, metals, ceramics, all different kinds. But essentially, it's the same approach for each material. It involves getting a best fit distribution of the data. You can apply the normal distribution, the log normal, Weeble distribution, any distribution. There's many others. But essentially, we're going to focus on the normal distribution today. Once you fit your best fit distribution, then you can extract material allowables from that best fit distribution. So some terminology one needs to be familiar with in the Mill Handbook 17 is A basis and B basis allowables. A basis allowable is the more conservative allowable. It is essentially the allowable at which at least 99% of the population is expected to equal or exceed with 95% confidence. The B basis is the allowable at which at least 90% of the population is expected to be equal or exceed with 95% confidence. So those definitions may be abstract for some people. I understand that. I'll kind of give a visual representation of what that represents. That's shown here. So you can see we have a standard normal distribution, we have standard deviation on the x-axis, and then relative frequency of occurrence on the y-axis. So the A basis is essentially the 95% lower confidence on the first percentile right here. The B basis is definitely exceeds the A basis. It's, it occurs at the 10th percentile, and it's at the 95% lower confidence value. So um, if you're not a statistical guru, I understand um, some of this just may be mush to you. But, you know, there's uh, in the handbook they have equations, so you don't really have to understand all this. But these are the equations to determine the A basis and B basis values. And this will be applied in a Python script, which I'll show. Essentially, the A basis is the mean minus a constant A that you can look up in the table or derive from this equation where n is the number of samples and then you multiply that by the standard deviation of the distribution. The B basis is defined in the same way just a different uh, constant right here KB value which is a function of the number of samples. So let's go ahead and step into a real world example on how to apply this. So here's the script that determines the A basis and B basis values for the normal distribution. Here I've imported packages such as matplotlib, scipy, numpy, and the math package. And then these are the functions that determine my B basis for the normal distribution and A basis for the normal distribution. It takes arguments such as mean, standard deviation, and number of samples. It just represents the equations I presented in the slides. Here I have a list of the data. I'm actually using data from Mill Handbook 17. It's going to come from problem 3. This is the data that I'm using and that I've put into the Python list. And then I have my domain over which I want to plot the values. This will be used for graphing and visual aid. So next I leverage SciPy. So this is a pretty important function. Uh, essentially the norm.fit. I pass in the data and it returns metrics such as the location and scale parameter for the normal distribution that best fits the data. So the location parameter for the normal distribution is the mean. The scale parameter is going to be the standard deviation. I go ahead and print those values just to see if they make sense. So here's our mean and here's our standard deviation of our data. Now what I do is I go ahead and pass the location and scale parameter into a function called norm and it'll just this represents a 
an object that uh, will help me plot the normal distribution PDF or probability density function. So I pass it into there. Now I have the ability to plot the probability density function. So that's what I do. So here's my domain and then here is my PDF. I access the dot PDF method and to basically get my y values for my best fit normal distribution function. And then I also plot the data as a histogram to overlay my PDF function. And then I set some important things to, to realize in this function is I set the bins to auto. I let you know Python determine that. And then I normalize the data so I can compare my the shape of my PDF function to the data. So this is important to do that. You'll see why. And then I have some labels. So this should return a graph of my data and my PDF function. And you can see that's, you know, this is a believable fit, right? So just to emphasize, if I didn't normalize my data here, um, you would <laughs> not get a result you want. You can see that if you don't normalize your data, you just get a frequency versus a random variable plot. And you can't, your PDF is so small, you can't compare the two. So just make sure you set this value equal to true if you want to present the data in this manner. Another tool, visual tool used to see whether a distribution is a good fit or not is a probability plot. I've discussed this in previous video. I have an Excel demonstration on how to plot these. But SciPy has a function that actually determines it for you. It's called prop plot. Essentially, I pass in my data and then I specify the distribution, the probability plot distribution I want to evaluate. And then I pass in my best fit distribution, my location and shape parameters. And it returns our, our quantiles and some fit metrics used to evaluate whether the distribution was good or not. So I go ahead and, and apply the prop plot function and then it returns some, some values here. I plot my quantiles, which is represents my best fit line. And then I also plot my data here, which is going to uh, be accessed through the quantiles uh, array. And you can see if I go ahead and run this, it should return a probability plot for the normal distribution, and it does. And you can see that there's my straight line and there's my data on the quantile plot. And then you can, I also put the R squared metric on there so you can use that to, to compare other distributions if you want. So now um, I'm going to pass in my mean and standard deviation and the length of my data to determine my B basis and A basis values. If I run that, It'll pass it into these functions up here. And then what I do next is I print those values out. And you can see my B basis value is basically 85 PSI. My A basis is 75 PSI. So this comes from the best fit normal distribution, just FYI. That's why I passed in the location and mean parameters up here to the function. And um, essentially, you can use the B basis or A basis to do your post-processing uh, and calculate your margins of safety. So that's how that's done, guys. This is a real-world application of fitting distributions to data to determine material allowables. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. Adios.